Hello there. On behalf of Bethel Lutheran Church in Bay City, Michigan, welcome to this time of worship and praise. This week marks the, the closing of the Epiphany season. For a, a number of weeks, we've been seeing Jesus display his glory as the Son of God through his earthly ministry. We, we see it one more time before the beginning of Lent as we celebrate the, the transfiguration of our Lord. Transfiguration is uh, maybe a more common word is, is metamorphosis, and we'll, we'll hear about that as we go through today. To, to see the glory of the Son of God is a, a marvelous thing, something fully worthy of thanks and praise to our God. And, and so we have something just a, a little bit different for you today. The concert choir of Michigan Lutheran Seminary was scheduled to, to join us in person. But with ongoing concerns about COVID, Bethel's leadership decided to, to postpone the, the in-person event until a better time. But we're not without their music. Listen and enjoy as these young Christians express their faith and confess God's word through song. If you'd like to, to follow along with the, the words of the songs, please follow the link in the video description. I'll be back with a, a short devotion in just a few minutes.
Good morning. Good morning. The next song the choir will sing this morning is The King of Love, My Shepherd Is, and the words on are on page two and three for you to join along in singing certain verses. It indicates on each verse whether you sing with us or whether the choir sings it by themselves. Please join us now in singing The King of Love, My Shepherd Is. <laughs>
our meditation today is the Gospel of Mark, chapter 9, verses 2 through 9. After six days, Jesus took Peter, James, and John with him and led him up a high mountain where they were alone by themselves. There he was transfigured in front of them. His clothes became radiant, dazzling white, whiter than anyone on earth could bleach them. And Elijah appeared to them, together with Moses, and they were talking with Jesus. Peter said to Jesus, Rabbi, it is good for us to be here. Let us make three tents, one for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah. He did not know what to say because they were terrified. A cloud appeared and overshadowed them, and a voice came from the cloud saying, This is my son, whom I love. Listen to him. Suddenly, when they looked around, they no longer saw anyone with them except Jesus alone. As they were coming down the mountain, Jesus commanded them not to tell anyone what they had seen until the Son of Man had risen from the dead. This is the gospel, the good news of our Lord. Dear friends in Christ, when was the last time someone called on you to, to be their witness? Or you called on someone to be a witness for you? If you've never been involved in, in a court case, uh, about the only time we, we need a witness is when you're signing a marriage certificate or some other legal document that, that calls for someone to say, I, I saw this, it happened. But if you end up on trial, if you end up on a jury, you're going to see a witness. They're, they're a vital part of the process. Their testimony is the basis for the verdict. In, in big, high-profile celebrity trials, the, the witnesses sometimes can get almost as much attention as the person on trial. The, the cameras and reporters, they're, they're all over every witness, trying to, to get down to the bottom of things, trying to, to get down to, to the truth about the, the well-known figure. They're, they're all trying to, to answer the question, well, what, what really happened? A question that the people have asked ever since our, our Savior came is, who is Jesus, really? That, that question is, is answered with finality on the mountain where Jesus was transfigured. And even though he, he only had a, a few witnesses at the time, Jesus revealed his glory as the Son of God. And now, through God's word, we are also witnesses. In his transfiguration, Jesus' form displays his divine glory. And to make that testimony even more certain, God the Father also takes the witness stand and, and proclaims Jesus to be his son. Now, people still ask questions about Jesus. Is he truly the, the all-knowing, all-powerful God? Sometimes our, our sinful flesh, our sinful nature wants to answer, I'm not so sure, I, I don't think so. Our, our sinful nature wants to buy into the world's ideas about Jesus, that, that at best he, he was only a great teacher, or some sort of you know, wise philosopher. And, and that's because our, our sinful flesh is always looking for, for the loophole in God's verdict on our sin, something that will allow us to, to cancel out or, or work off punishment on our own. Then Jesus becomes only the example of how to live a life that, that somehow gets us off the hook. And if that's what Jesus was, it's, it's an example we can never copy perfectly. And if just one mark is left on our record, in God's books that's enough to condemn us. But while Peter, James, and John were standing there on the mountain, they, they saw something that told them exactly who Jesus was. Jesus was transformed, allow something some of his glory as God to, to shine through. He, even his clothes turned an, an unearthly white, the, the kind of white no bleach or dye could ever make. Elijah and Moses, servants of God from, from long ago, came and served as, as heavenly witnesses to the event. This man, Jesus, the, the one that they had known and, and followed, he was more than human. He was God. God had become human in the person of Jesus, and he did that for, for our salvation. He was human so that he could be under God's law. 
He kept God's law and, and suffered and, and died. But because he was God, he, he makes his death count for all people. Our, our record, your record, my record, it's, it's wiped completely clean in God's eyes. It was a great thing for Peter, James, and John to, to get a small glimpse of Jesus' divine glory and to see Elijah and, and Moses in person as additional witnesses. But then they, they got to hear the testimony of God the Father himself. Before Peter finished speaking about setting up a, a place for, for Jesus and Moses and Elijah, this cloud comes down and covers them. And it, it was no storm cloud. It was an indication that, that God himself was present. And the disciples might have remembered Jesus' baptism when, when the Father spoke from a cloud then. And in fact, God's presence in a cloud went all the way back to, to the time of Moses, when, when God had led his people with a pillar of cloud by day, a pillar of fire by night. Now Mark doesn't tell us exactly what was going through the disciples' minds when this new thing started happening, but, but Matthew does. We, we know that they were already terrified by what had been going on, Matthew, in his account, adds that they fell face down on the ground when they heard the voice of God. They, they recognized their sinfulness, and they remembered what God's word said, that, that no one can stand in the presence of God and take in his full divine glory and survive the encounter. Sinful human beings cannot live in the presence of the holy and sinless God. Since we're born in sin and add more to our record with every unkind thought and every instance of self-serving pride, we, we deserve to be put out of God's presence forever. But the message they heard as they're there face down on the ground, the, the message that we hear is, is one that's uplifting. The, the Father says, this is my Son, whom I love. Listen to him. God spoke from heaven itself and told us who Jesus is. Jesus is God's son. God loved his son and what he was doing on earth. And that's made even more certain in what the Father says next. Listen to him. And he says listen in the sense of, of follow him and, and do what he says. Following Jesus is the right path to heaven. Not because Jesus shows us how to, how to live to earn heaven, but because Jesus is the one who lived and died to earn heaven for us gift of eternal life is, is now ours to keep. As quickly as it all started, Moses and Elijah and the cloud were gone, and, and Jesus looked just the way he had before. And as they walked back down the mountain, Jesus told them to, to keep this experience to themselves until after the resurrection. If they had shared the truth of what happened ahead of time, it might have been misused or simply not believed. But Jesus' words also implied that there would be a resurrection and that there would for, therefore would be a proper time for, for them to share the, the news of the glory that they had just witnessed. Jesus has done this to, to strengthen them so that when they see him go the way of the cross, they, they remember that, that he's doing this on purpose to, to rescue and save us. And this time that Jesus spoke about it's come. Jesus has risen from the dead. It's, it's the proof of our salvation, the, the hope of our future glory in heaven. Even though we have not personally seen Christ's glory like the disciples, we, we see his glory shine in his word. It tells us all about him, everything he is and everything that he's done for us. And Christ continues to reveal that glory. He reveals it through us when, when we share his word, when we tell a friend, when, when we pray for, for a family member, when we give our gifts to, to support ministry work, Christ is there, using us to, to make his love known in the world. And so we serve together with Moses and Elijah and Peter and James and John as, as witnesses of who Jesus is and what he's accomplished for us. We, we join the list of witnesses with all other Christians who declare Jesus to be the, the glorious Son of God as he was revealed and proclaimed on the mountain of transfiguration. One who came to, to humble himself as our Savior, as we'll hear about once again during the upcoming season of Lent. As so we hear those things about Jesus' suffering, may God grant that we remember what they mean, what they mean for our salvation, what they mean for our place in heaven. May God grant that we look forward to seeing that glory on full display when we do reach that home. Amen. 
And now may the peace of God, which goes beyond all human understanding, guard and keep your heart and your mind through faith in Christ Jesus. Amen. Dear friends in Christ, let us pray. Dear Savior, how lowly you appear as you ascend the Mount of Transfiguration. As you go up with Peter, James, and John, you seem to be nothing more than an average human being. But together with your disciples, today I see more than I expect. I see your face shining like the sun and your clothes white as the light. You are the glorious Son of God. As I hear you talking about your impending death in Jerusalem, give me comfort in knowing that God has come to earth and taken on human flesh in order to save me. Amen. And hear me as I pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. We hear next the second set of songs from the Concert Choir of Michigan Lutheran Seminary. Oh, 
your servants that peace which the world cannot give, that our hearts may be set to obey your commandments. Defend us also from the fear of our enemies, that we may live in peace and quietness. Through the merits of Jesus Christ, our Savior, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. And now, with sins forgiven, assured of eternal life, through Jesus, our Savior, Receive his blessing. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look on you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Thank you for, for spending this time with us today. We, we pray that, that it lifted your eyes heavenward to, to see that, that glory of our Savior in preparation for, for witnessing his suffering in the weeks ahead. During this, this season of Lent, our, our intention is to, to return, if you've been following our videos since the beginning, to, to return to those midweek meditation videos, uh, along with our Bible study podcast and, and our weekend worship videos. May God bless the, the time that you are able to, to spend in his word, and may he bless your week. We close today with the choir singing Day by Day. <laughs> <laughs> 